late. You want your lunch, Lucy? Don't start that again. I just want to know where I stand. I hope you don't think I'm jealous. No, no. I want lunch tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Pick you up outside engineering. No, I'll be so glad when it's April. Why? Prometheus test at the Cape. Five whole days. I'm uh, not sure I'm going. Lucy? Well, it all depends what Ed's got scheduled for me. My boss is very efficient. You're already scheduled, lover. Well, an executive secretary knows all, sees all, and does all. It's very late. Very late. Now you save that for tomorrow, huh? <laughs> Want me to fix you some coffee? No, I'll be fine. April's when the baby's due, isn't it? Yeah, I guess so. See you at noon. You know, I just can't picture you changing diapers. Carol, will you just knock it off? All right. But you just go out and dream about those warm Florida nights at the Cape. My regards to your wife. Good night. in depth of the spiritual conflicts of the 20th century. Insight. How do you do? I'm Father Kaiser. Freedom is at once the most wondrous and terrifying of human powers. It is wondrous because it is the power to love, to surrender oneself to God as he lives in other people, to make one's life a service of them. Freedom is terrifying because it is the power to say no to love, to make egotistical gratification the sum total of one's existence, to close in on oneself in an ecstasy of self-adoration. This is the basic choice that faces every human being, to love or not to love, to live for God or to live for oneself, to open out in the service of other men or to close in behind the four walls of one's own ego. Today's story concerns two people who are forced to wrestle with this decision. you with Ed Harmon and the new project engineer. I called the office. You weren't there. <laughs> what do you expect us to do, Star? We had dinner at the rancho. Did Ed kiss you goodnight? Why don't you knock it off? You got nothing better to do than sit there and work those stupid crossword puzzles and be suspicious. Now, you know the presentation has to be ready for the R&D contract. Otherwise, we can lose the whole Prometheus project. Keep drinking the way you are, and the Prometheus project will lose you. I had a rough day, so I had a couple of drinks, OK? You're just jealous because the doctor won't let you drink. Oh, you smell like New Year's Eve. Oh, I've been so sick to my stomach all day. As a matter of fact, I've been sick to my stomach ever since we decided on the baby. No, yeah. the baby was your idea. This whole thing doesn't do much for my stomach either. So naturally, I take a drink. Well, don't blame it on the baby. You've been drunk for two years now. Well, you've been doing those lousy crossword puzzles. What else am I supposed to do when I'm here alone? That's at night. In the daytime, you're off to your classes in finger painting, or uh, flower arrangement, or uh, ancient Mesopotamian cooking. Will you not start that again? Or to your analysts. The fact that I build capsules to carry man to the conquest of the universe is certainly 
not as important or interesting as probing your rather untidy psyche at $25 an hour. But I find my work uh, interesting and difficult enough to entitle me to a little uh, relaxation. You're an unfunny, pompous ass. <laughs> and your sense of humor is as warped as your belly. Damn you! Damn you! Damn you! I should have gotten a divorce instead of getting pregnant! Honey, um... You are committed. Oh, I don't want the little monster. You should have thought of that before. I should have thought. I thought the baby would save our marriage. Our marriage. What a joke. God, I'm glad when it's over. Honey, come on now, where's that old Madonna spirit, you know? Anytime you want to carry the baby, you're welcome to it. Women have been having children for 200,000 years, give or take a few. And not one among that vast throng has had the troubles you've had. What would you know about troubles? You keep yourself numb with booze all the time. I come back to the same argument. It was your idea. You've done very nicely for nine years without the, uh, pat our little feet around here. For nine years, we have done nothing nicely. When we stop to talk about whether our marriage is going to be saved or not, we're committed. We're past the point of no return. You can't be a little bit pregnant, you know. I know that. But at least I can expect a little decency and understanding from you. At least I can expect when I feel this way, you don't spend half the night out boozing. Who was there? I told you I had dinner with Ed Harmon. I mean, what women? Well, Ed brought his secretary along to take notes. That blonde tramp. She takes more than notes, I'll bet. Every day it's a different form, but it's the same martyrdom. Oh, go to hell. Just go to hell. Well, where do you think I've been for the last nine years? I'm getting out. I'm not going to stay here and take this. Oh! oh. Lucy, will you cut the act? You're no more convincing than usual. <laughs> Lucy, Lucy, you're kidding or what? Lucy. Lucy. <sighs> I'm sorry. The baby. I'll call Harry. Please, it's an emergency. Yes. Uh, uh, Charlie Hartzer, 8314729. And hurry, please. Well, have him call me back immediately. Lucy. Uh, Lucy, you're going to be fine. You'll see. Uh, you're going to be fine. Everything is going to be okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Lucy, I, I, I'm, I'm really very sorry. What do you mean, bad news? Is Lucy? No, no. She's fine. You lost the baby. No. It's uh, too early to tell yet, definitely. But don't get your uh, hopes up about the baby. Come on, Harry, will you stop being mysterious and tell me what's wrong? Well, she's a... The baby's retarded, Charlie. A lot of tests have to be made. It's too early to say yet how severe it is. Retarded? Does Lucy know? I think we'd better wait. She had a rough time. Are you sure? There's no question she's retarded. The question is, how severely? This is what was going to save our marriage. Why? You mean what causes this? Now, there are a dozen causes. In this case, it appears to be a congenital defect. What we call in my profession, bad engineering, huh? God does not permit evil to punish men for their sins. 
Why he does is something of a mystery. God understands it. Because of our limited minds, we cannot. But of this we are sure. God is love. He loves each and every member of the human race. He will permit no man to suffer unless in one way or another that suffering can contribute to his overall welfare. This is sometimes difficult for us to accept. At the time, suffering seems so very futile. But not infrequently, after the pain has passed, we begin to see more clearly. God did have a reason. He used the suffering to enrich our lives. Mary explained to me in considerable detail. It's consoling, isn't it? Just when you think things can't get worse, they do. There's nothing to be gained by dwelling on it. Have you seen her? No, not since the first time. She's pretty, like a little Chinese doll. Lucy, don't get sentimental and confuse mongoloid with Chinese doll. Harry said she probably wouldn't live, thank God. I know. It seems awful to wish for the death of something that's part of you. Anything you want tomorrow? Are you leaving now? I have to meet uh, Harmon. And his note-taking secretary? Lucy, will you cut it out? Will you just cut it out? I'm not going to solve anything this way. I don't know how you've managed to do it. But you certainly have managed to twist it around so that everything is my fault. My fault we had a baby. My fault she's defective. And now that I've done this terrible thing to you, you have every right to go out and find whatever happiness you can. How do things look from up there on the cross? They look miserable. Why? Why does this have to happen to me? One of heaven's practical jokes. And a rather bad taste at that. I'll see you in the morning. Charlie! Sorry, lost my head. Have a constructive evening. Shall I send in the nurse? Yes, please. She's a great comfort to me. No, it's not your fault. It's not Lucy's. It's not a result of anything you've done. Why? I can't give you a reason. But I can quote statistics. Over 3% of all the children born in this country are born retarded to some degree. It's nothing to be ashamed of, Charlie. Harry, you said something before about babies born like this not living long. How long? It depends on a lot of factors. Seldom over 12 years. 12 years? It's just great. That's great. Harry, we want a divorce. The baby was one last try to pull our marriage together. Well, that didn't work, to say the least. And it makes a nasty complication. Who gets custody of it? I mean, who gets to watch it suffer for 12 years? You've got to realize this, Charlie. There's no suffering for the child. All the pain is with you and Lucy. It took us nine years to decide to become parents, and then all we can produce is a happy little vegetable. Oh, more than a vegetable, Charlie. A human being. A retarded child is still a child, often a very lovable one. I said you shouldn't be ashamed of the baby, not that you should keep it. You shouldn't. She's going to need constant care. She needs an institution. You and Lucy can visit her whenever you want. You mean you can arrange to have her committed? Yes. That's all there is to it? They do the rest? They do the rest. As her parents, though, you could pray for her. If prayers really helped, she wouldn't have been born, would she? In surgery, sometimes I have to cause pain to save a life. I imagine God has some pretty tricky decisions to make, too. You know, Harry, for a man of science, you're uh, very naive. 
I would appreciate if you make the necessary arrangements. Oh, wait, wait, can't tonight, dear. No, no, it's sweet of you to ask, but actually, we haven't been anywhere yet. Oh, but don't be silly. You and Jim are our best friends. Look, it's just that Charlie's been working a lot and I've been tied up with the baby. No one has seen her yet, dear. As a matter of fact, the nurse will hardly let us in. You know, with premature births like that, they have to be very careful. Uh, can I, can I call you next week? Yes. Uh, well, yes, it's sweet of you. Our love to Jim. Goodbye. That's Helen. She's very suspicious. She's like a vulture. Asking questions about the baby. What can I tell her? What can I say? I can't go on living a lie like this. Tell her it died. What? We tell them it died. We have a brief period of mourning, and that's it. Harry set up for me to talk to the director of the state hospital. I have the commitment papers right here. That seems so awful. Would you rather watch her grow up and keep trying to explain to your friends what kind of a monster you gave birth to? We gave birth to, damn it. She's part yours, too. I won't argue physiological function with you. Lucy, don't get sentimental again. Harry explained how it would all be. We, we can't keep her. Will she be somewhere near where I can visit her? The best thing to do is think of her as though she had died. Would have been such a blessing if she had. We make our own blessing. We accept it. The longer we keep her, the more difficult it's going to be. She seems so helpless. So are we. We've had bad luck. Let's make the best of it. I did once. Prayed she'd die. But last night I prayed she'd get well. Well, she won't. She can't ever get well. I know that. What were you praying to? To something I used to believe in. If they were a god, do you think he'd permit things like this to happen? I don't know. I believed once. That was a long time ago. We're all born with a blank piece of paper. We have to write the jokes ourselves. <laughs> we certainly came up with a funny one this time. Why? There must be a reason. Sure, there's a reason. It was because we tried to do something good, something right. We tried to save our marriage, to be a family. We tried to do what a pious married couple is expected to do. That's why we got slapped in the face. If I were a religious person, I'd spit at the sky. That's lousy. Just lousy. Yeah. I feel like slamming my fist through a wall. I feel like, I'd like to hit somebody. I just feel like screaming. You can't do this to us. There's nobody to scream at. Us? Do you realize this is the first time in a long time that we've been on the same side? Yeah. The lawyer will be here at 8.30. Tonight? About the divorce. You'll have her sign the... Commitment paper is also about the baby. We can work out the settlement. What are you looking so surprised about? We discussed all this. I didn't know it would happen so soon. Nine years. It better be soon. Well, we're still young enough to enjoy life. You've already got your enjoyment picked out. Lucy, we both admitted we made a mistake. Lots of people have. We correct it. We don't have to hate each other. We can be adult about it. It's easier if I hate you. It always has been. 
I'll be back in time. I'm having dinner out. With Harmon's secretary? Yes. human phenomena. Some men carry telephone poles, other men carry splinters, but all men carry crosses. It is part and parcel of human existence. A selfish person, if he's going to remain selfish, may react to the cross in either of two ways. Either he will try to escape the cross by losing himself in a maze of sensate pleasures, or else he will close further in on himself and become bitter and resentful. In neither case, however, will he be able to avoid the cross. It remains a fact of his existence a disconcerting fact, because it shatters the basic illusions upon which he has built his life. From the vantage point of the cross, one can see the futility of living for oneself alone. The pleasures of the senses and the gratification of one's ego leave one empty and alone. They cannot be depended upon. When all else fails, there's only one thing that does not fail. That thing is a person. It's God. He is our Father. We are his children. He wants to enrich our lives with his love. He wants us to share his love with one another. The cross sometimes helps us do just that. Hey. hey, you're about as much fun as the common cold tonight. What's the matter, love? Are you saving all your playtime for the baby? Oh, shut up. Ooh. Not all you thought it would be? Oh, don't worry, lover. It may get better after you're past the diaper stage. When you start getting all those bright little questions. Daddy, tell me all about quantum mechanics. Why don't you just stop trying to be so clever? If I were clever, I'd never have gotten mixed up with you. Everybody's mixed up. The whole world's mixed up. I just don't want any jokes tonight. What do you want? I uh, would like another drink. That's my boy. I was afraid fatherhood had made a married man out of you. I told Lucy about the divorce tonight. She scream? No, just sad. Quietly sad. She's got a lot of guts. Well, we don't have to wait until April. And the way you're going, you may not make it. Now, don't you start on me. I don't want to hear any nagging. Oh, sorry, lover. I promise I won't be a new Lucy. Oh, come off it, Carol, will you, huh? If you were half the woman Lucy is... Oh, never mind, I'm sorry. If I were half the woman Lucy is, what? Nothing. I was just thinking. Nine years is a long time. Hey, let's just have a good time tonight. We can make up for all the lost time. And we'll have a ball, and I promise I won't leave you. Will you stop talking? I can't, will you just stop talking? Hey, are you mad at me or yourself? I don't know. Who do you blame? Just who in hell do you blame? Charlie, I don't know what you're talking about, and I'm certainly in no mood for a game of 20 questions. That's because you can't provide any of the answers for me, can you? I'm sorry I snapped at you. Hey, where are you going? It's early. For you, maybe. For me, it's very late. I'm sorry I lost up the evening. Good night, Carol.
my watch says. Couldn't you fight your way out of the bar? You had an appointment at 8.30. I should have called. The lawyer waited almost an hour. I'm sorry. Well, we couldn't sign the commitment papers without you. Or talk about the settlement. I called your office and you weren't there. Obviously, or you would have talked to me. You're not drunk. Well, don't say it so accusingly. Then where in the devil have you... Never mind. I withdraw the question. It's not important. Yes, it is, Lucy. It's... It's very important. It's one I should have asked a long time ago. Where the devil have we both been? What's that supposed to mean? Maybe you have to have really bad luck just to see how good your luck has really been. I still don't follow you. Lucy, you've been working those crossword puzzles long enough to know that marriage is an eight-letter word. But it doesn't have to be an unpleasant one. We've made it that way. Let's say I've made it that way. I've been with Harry discussing our baby. Do you realize that's the first time you've ever said our baby? Is it? Yes. Lucy, we went to see her. You're right. We're all she's got. What are you talking about? Harry says, because one baby was born retarded, it doesn't mean that others will be. It isn't hereditary. Your next baby should be normal. My next baby? Yes. Lucy, nine years is a long time. A long time. It's a long investment. Maybe we shouldn't just throw it all away. Does that sound like a reasonable position to take? position do you take on prayers being answered? I don't recall praying, but Lucy, I'm asking. Thank you. Lucy and Charlie have begun to love again. What has produced the change? The birth of their retarded child. On the surface, a great tragedy, but for them, a blessing in disguise. The anguish and disappointment occasioned by the child succeeded in cracking the shells which had kept them enclosed in a sterile egotism. It has enabled them to glimpse in each other the essential lovableness placed there by God. Pleasure draws together two bodies, but only suffering can unite two souls. God knows better than we do what is good for us. Sometimes he allows suffering to invade our lives, that he might draw from it an even greater good. Suffering can show us the value of love. It can teach us how to love. It can deepen and strengthen the power of love within us. This is sometimes why God permits it. Insight is a production of the Paulus Fathers, a group of Catholic priests who serve their God by serving those outside their church.